जैन स्टूडेंट्स सो दिस इज माई सेकेंड वीडियो ऑन द कॉम्प्लेक्स टॉपिक्स फॉर वायरलेस एंड मोबाइल कम्युनिकेशन के ई सी जीरो सेवन सिक्स सो द टॉपिक इज वो कोडर्स ओके सो बिफोर गोइंग फॉर वो कोडर्स लेट्स टेक द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ स्पीच कोडिंग सो हेयर वी हैव द स्पीच कोडर्स विच आर क्लासिफाइड एज वे फॉर्म कोडर्स एंड सोर्स कोडर्स so what is actually vocoder vocoder is actually a form of uh, encoder which is used to code the speech signal right in mobile communication wireless communication the main objective is to transmit the data okay and that data can be voice or it can be any other data so voice signal can be transferred once your voice is coded okay because we are living in a world of digital uh, communication so in digital communication your speech should be converted into encoded form of bits so the vocoders will convert your speech in the form of encoded uh, bits so for that we have waveform coders and source coders waveform coders can further be classified as time domain and frequency domain so this we have already studied in 6th uh, semester uh, that is pcm delta pcm ad pcm sbc atc okay this we have already studied so we will talk about the source coders source coders can further be classified as lpc and the vocoder okay so we will discuss about the vocoder in this video lpc is linear predictive coding now uh, the main characteristics of speech signal that are exploited while we are converting this speech signal into the fo form of encoded bits so the characteristics that we exploit are the probability density function that is pdf the autocorrelation function okay and the power spectral density function so these are the three characteristics that we exploit while we are converting our speech signal into a uh, corresponding waveform or the coding form okay so this is the uh, basic of vocoder so vocoders are a class of a speech coding system that analyze the voice signal at the transmitter then transmit parameters derived from the analysis and then synthesize the voice at the receiver using those parameter so basically there are three steps first step is the analysis at the transmitter side second is the transmission of those parameters and the third one is at the receiver side we do the synthesis okay so analysis at the transmitter and synthesis at the receiver are the main function of the vocoder vocoder is an audio processor that is used to transmit speech or voice signal in the form of digital data that are, i already told you the vocoder is used as a short form of voice coder so vocoder means voice coder okay so that's why vo coder right vocoders are basically used for digital coding speech and voice simulation the bit rate for available narrow band vo vocoder is from 1.2 to 64 kbps this is the speed now vocoder operates on the principle of formants formants are basically the meaningful components of a speech that is generated during human voice like i am explaining to you right so the voice which is produced uh, has some properties and what properties we extract we extract the formants so formants from speech can be converted into the corresponding bits whenever a speech signal is transmitted it is not needed uh, to transmit the precise waveform we can simply transmit the information by which one can reconstruct that uh, particular waveform this reconstructed waveform at the receiver must be similar to not very identical to the which is transmitted from the transmitting end now vocoder work in such a way that it first captures the characteristic element of the signal so what all the characteristics that we uh, take the pdf okay and the autocorrelation function and the acf then the other uh, audio signals are affected by the use of those characteristic signal so vocoders are used for voice synthesis okay first analysis then transmission of parameter and the third one is synthesis the vocoder takes two signal and create a third signal using the spectral information in the two input signal it aims to emblem the amplitude and the frequency characteristics of speech signal onto the synthesis signal 
while maintaining the pitch of the speed signal. Okay, so here we can see the model. So this is actually the model of a vocoder. Here we can see that uh, this is the impulse generator and this is the noise generator. And here we have the filter. So noise generator is basically in our voice signal we have some voiced sound and we have some unvoiced sound. So voice voiced sounds are produced uh, by the frequency that we can provide and unvoiced sounds are produced by the noise generation. So here what we are doing we are just generating the equivalent model of uh, the format like our uh, speech is produced. So in our speech we have some voiced information and some unvoiced information. So whatever I am uh, uh, speaking the voiced data of that particular talk will be converted or will be converted into the equivalent waveform by using a frequency control. So for that we have some impulse generator and from this we are generating the, generating the equivalent voiced signal as I am speaking into the form of electrical signal. Similarly here for unvoiced sounds okay what we are using we are using the noise generator for that. Now here we have a switch. So once if I am uh, speaking in a, a sentence so in a sentence there may, might be possible some voice sounds are there and some unvoiced sounds are there. So this is speech uh, this switch will be uh, switching from voice to unvoiced as whatever I am speaking. Likewise, your speech will be converted into the equivalent uh, electrical electromagnetic wave. So the switch position is according to the voice and unvoiced sound. Then we have the filter and then we have the synthesized speech waveform. Now this is the voice encoder which will be at the transmitting end. Okay, This is very important voice encoder and the decoder the block diagram of voice uh, encoder and decoder of vocoder. So this is very important topic. Okay, so how encoding is done? So first we have the speech input, right? And that is speech will be formed in the previous slide I have told you how your speech is generated in the, into the form of electromagnetic signal. So that electromagnetic form of speech input will be provided, uh, okay, to number of bandpass filters. So here we can see that we have uh, a bandpass filter which is ranging from 200 to 400 hertz then 400 to 600 hertz, then 3200 hertz. So as we know that our, uh, our uh, speed signal is ranging from 20 hertz to uh, 32 kilohertz. Uh, so here uh, we have separated uh, a number of bandpass filters we have kept here uh, with a bandwidth of 200 hertz. So 200 hertz bandwidth is uh, there and again 200 hertz bandwidth. So we have number of bandpass filters which are starting from 200 hertz to 3200 hertz right then we have a frequency discriminator here the additional part then we have the rectifiers and then we have low pass filter and then adc and multiplexers so what is the purpose of bandpass filter bandpass filter uh, the information the part of the information in which we have the frequency which is ranging in this particular range that will be transmitted by through this bandpass filter rest all will be filtered out similarly the other part of uh, uh, of the speech which uh, in which the frequency is ranging from 400 to 600 hertz will be passed through, through this bandpass filter and other part will be filtered out so likewise here we can see that the corresponding uh, range will be passed through the bandpass filter and the other one will be filtered out then this speech will be given to the rectifier. So what is the purpose of rectifier that we have studied in first year? So the purpose of rectifier is to convert AC into equivalent form of DC signal. Okay, so here your uh, signal will be converted into the equivalent form of DC voltage or DC signal. Then we have a low pass filter to filter out additional components. Then your DC voltage will be applied to ADC that is analog to digital converter. So up to this point our signal is in the form of analog signal. Now we need to convert this analog signal into the equivalent form of bits. So here uh, this box we have ADC and the multiplexer. So why we are needing multiplexer? We need multiplexer because here you can see that we have a number of signals let's say n. 
So, n signals are multiplexed together and then transmitted in one signal format. So, here the output will be the encoded voice signal. There is additional uh, block that we have kept here which is the frequency discriminator. So, <coughs> this discriminator will produce will be uh, provided to this ADC. Uh, this is actually DC voltage proportional to the voiced frequency. Okay, so this signal is also transmitted along with the other part of the speed signal. So, this is how your uh, encoded bits are generated at the transmitting end. So, this process is known as the analysis. Okay, so this is the analysis which we do at the transmitting end. Then the next process is to transmit these uh, parameters through the channel. This is the next uh, process and then at the receiver what we do? We do the synthesis. Okay, so this theory I have already explained. I will just go through again. So, frequency spectrum of speed signal will be divided into 15 frequency ranges like, uh, by the bandpass filters that I have shown. The output of bandpass filter will be provided to the rectifier unit to convert it in from AC to DC. Then the signal is rectified and filtered to produce the DC voltage. Then the generated DC voltage is proportional to the amplitude of equivalent AC voltage. The input of frequency discriminator is the speed signal. The frequency discriminator unit followed by a low pass filter which is of 220 uh, hertz. The low pass filter generates a DC voltage which is proportional to the voiced frequency. Okay, so the frequency represents nothing but uh, 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 the pitch of the voice. Okay, this DC voltage also indicates whether the speech is voiced or unvoiced. So, basically the additional component that we have added at the bottom side, it is actually uh, telling you whether this uh, particular signal is voiced or unvoiced. Now, the output of all LPF or the low pass filters is a DC voltage which is sampled, multiplexed and A to D converted. So, output will be the encoded form of it. Okay. So, this is the output of the analyzer. Now, we have uh, sent uh, the output of uh, vocoder uh, encoder from the transmitting end. We have transmitted those parameters. Now, at the receiver, we are using the decoder. Okay. So, here we can see the decoder. This is the encoded voice signal that we are receiving here. Here we have the D multiplexer and D to A converter. Okay. So, first what we will do? We will do the D multiplexing. At the transmitter we have done the multiplexing. So, at receiver we need to do the D multiplexing. Multiplexing means many to many to one. Okay. Now, uh, D multiplexing means one to many. Okay. So, at receiver we are doing the D multiplexing. So, D multiplexing means breaking the signal again into the separated ones, right? And DAC means DAC means digital to analog converter. Okay. So, your signal will be converted again to the analog form and in the separated form. <coughs> So, here um, uh, this uh, output is given to this decoder and equivalent uh, we have kept here, we have kept here equivalent balanced modulator BM1, BM2 and up to BM15. So, at the transmitting end we have used 15 bandpass filters, at the receiver side we are using 15 balanced modulators. What is this balanced modulator? I uh, you have studied uh, frequency modulation, okay. So, balance modulators are used for the frequency modulation and uh, in demodulation also you are using the balance modulator. So, uh, at the receiver side we have demultiplexer and D2A converter. So, here we have the decoder. Okay. So, the purpose of this decoder is to tell you whether the part of the speech is voiced or unvoiced. Okay. So, here we have the switch, we have the pulse generator and we have the noise generator. Okay. So, this noise generator will be used if the voice, if the signal is unvoiced and we use the voiced uh, for voice sound we are using the pulse uh, generator. Okay. So, accordingly it will be switched, it will be switched to either this point or this point. Okay. So, it will be connected to this means it will be connected to the circuit of balance modulator if we have the voiced sounds. If we have a pause or unvoiced sound then uh, it will be connected to the noise generator. 
ओके सो इफ इट इज कनेक्टेड टू द बैलेंस मॉडलेटर सो अकॉर्डिंगली एज पर द फ्रीक्वेंसी विच इज सेंट बाय द फ्रीक्वेंसी सिंथेसाइजर इट विल कनेक्ट टू द टू दैट बैलेंस मॉडलेटर ओके सो दैट फ्रीक्वेंसी विल बी जनरेटेड लेट से दैट फ्रीक्वेंसी इज इक्वल टू दिस फॉर बैलेंस मॉडलेटर वन सो दैट सिग्नल विल बी गिवन टू बैलेंस मॉडलेटर वन एंड हेयर वी आर रिसीविंग अनदर सिग्नल सो uh this is how your signal will be demodulated okay so then we have the again bandpass filter we have kept and then uh, total we have 15 bandpass filters that we have kept then we have the adder okay so because uh, earlier we have separated uh, the signal so we have to uh, collect all the signals so this adder will be used to uh, sum up all the signal and to provide you one speech okay so the output will be the speech output okay so this is how your signal is decoded right so uh, let's have a recap what we are doing at the transmitter we are trans at the transmitter we use analysis then we transmit the signal those parameters after analysis and then at the receiver what we do we do the synthesis okay so um, this explanation i have already done just well just go through so the digital voice signal generated by the voice encoder is firstly decoded then the voice decoder using a speech synthesizer produces voice signal at the output and it is generally the approximated voice signal right so the digital voice signal generated by the voice encoder is firstly decoded and then demultiplexer and dac section convert the received encoded back to its analog form here a balance modulator and filter combination okay likewise balance modulator and filter combination we are using here okay it is used in correspondence to rectifier filter combination at the transmitter side the carry the carrier to this balance modulator is either the output of a noise generator or the pulse generator okay so for each balance modulator you can see this switch will connect you either to the balance modulator or it will connect to the noise generator so if your signal is voiced a signal then this switch will connect you to the either of the balance modulator depending upon the frequency range or it will connect you to the noise generator right but this depends on the position of the switch however the switch position is uh, decided by the decoder it is to because the voiced signal is received the switch will connect to the pulse generator output to the balance modulator similarly when an unvoiced signal is received the switch will connect noise generator output to the input of all balance modulator only certain balance modulator will provide the output if the received signal is voiced signal this totally depends on the frequency component of the received signal but we can get output from all balance modulator if the signal is unvoiced the adder will then add up all the signal and it will produce voice or speech output as your final value now uh, <coughs> these are the type of speech coders it can be waveform coder it can be voice coder it can be hybrid coder or it can be analysis by synthesis coders what are the waveform coders it preserves the original shape of the signal waveform better suited for higher bitrate coder for example pcm or adpcm voice coders are nothing but the vocoders A speech signal is assumed to be generated from all mod from model which is controlled by some parameters during encoding parameter of the model model are estimated from the input speech signal then the parameter are transmitted as the encoded bit stream at receiver we will do synthesis the quality of decoded speech depends on the model that we are using it is actually a low bitrate coder one example of vocoder is g729 vocoder then we have hybrid coders hybrid coders combine the strength of waveform coders along with the vocoder okay so once we want to improve the performance we can use a combination which is known as a hybrid coder additional parameter of the model are optimized such that decoded speech is as close to the original one because of uh, the low data rate vocoder speech quality is not that good so if we want to improve the speech quality we will use the hybrid coders <coughs> and hybrid coders are medium bitrate coders next we have analysis versus synthesis coder 
these actually are the improved form of vocoders synthesized signals are extracted from the given code book uh, it will find the best uh, perceptual match to the original speech by comparing the synthesized signal to the original one which is uh, having minimum error the parameters representing the best excitation signal and corresponding production filters are then sent over to the decoders the example of analysis by synthesis coders are g729 acelp cs acelp speech coders these are the example of analysis by synthesis coders okay so uh, then vocoders can further be classified as channel vocoder formant vocoder substrum vocoder and voice excited vocoders these are the four type of vocoders okay so lpc is also a one of the category of vocoder lpc is linear predictive coding so lpc vocoders which uses the linear predictive coding then we have the code uh, excitation linear predictive celp then we have medium excitation uh, melp then we have residual excited relp and then last we have adaptive differential pulse code uh, modulation adpcm so these are the type of linear predictive coders lpc10 is a special form of uh, uh, a vocoder so lpc10 is a me method used mostly in audio signal processing and speech processing for representing the spectral envelope of a digital signal of a speech in compressed form using the information a linear predictive model so in basically in lpc we use a linear predictive coding method okay uh, most signals such as speech music video signals are partially predictable and partially random these signal can be modeled as the output of a filter excited by an uncorrelated input okay because we don't know i mean uh, in in uh, in communication we can have our signal as a speech it can be music it can be video it can be data right so it is partially predictable partially random so that is why we are exciting this signal with the help of uncorrelated input right the random input model uh, the unpredictable part of the signal whereas the filter model the predictable structure of the signal the aim of lpc or the linear predictive coders is to model the mechanism that introduces the correlation in a signal then we have celp that is code excited linear prediction it is another form of vocoder lpc vocoder so one of the main principle behind celp is analysis by synthesis okay meaning that the encoding is performed by perceptually optimizing the decoded signal in a closed loop so basically analysis by synthesis is uh, is a closed loop form in which we are predicting the next signal based upon the previously received signal okay and it it uses uh, the idea of linear prediction model uh, to the uh, vocal tract it use uh, the use of adaptive and fixed code book entries as input excitation to the lp model the is uh, search performed in a closed loop in a perceptually weighted domain so what we do we have a code book in which we have some predefined codes which are available and based on the received sig signal we will match the received signal with the previously stored coded form and then we will generate the next signal based on the previously stored coded form that's why it is known as analysis by synthesis okay so <clears throat> this is the block, block diagram of celp here we have fixed code book okay which will give us the uh, code book gain and here we have the adaptive code book okay and ba based on this we are generating the excitation error en okay and then we have the synthesis filter which will uh, provide you the final output next we have uh, melp which is uh, mixed excitation linear prediction melp vocoder evolved from improvement and modification to another code excited linear predictive which is known as lpc10 traditional pitch excited lpc uh, coders are uh, either a periodic, a periodic pulse train or white noise as excitation for all pole synthesis filter melp coder uses a mixed excitation model that can produce more natural sound uh, or speech because it can represent a richer um, ensemble of possible speech characteristics okay so melp encoding is a robust and difficult 
acoustic environment with significant background noise and reverberation such as those frequently encountered in commercial and military communication system so it is actually a robust form of uh, lpc so we generally use uh, in some commercial and military communication systems it provides a very better quality uh, speech signal uh, this is the codec form of uh, melp here we have the pitch and a periodic flat we have inverse discrete fourier transform here then we have the shaping filter here okay here we have the band pass voicing strength which are provided to uh, shaping filter then here we have the noise generator okay the output is combined and given to adaptive spectral enhancement then lpc synthesis filter here we have used then scaling we are providing as per the gain then last we have the pulse dispersion filter so how uh, this is how we are synthesizing the speech signal which as output uh, this is adpcm the last one okay so adpcm is actually adaptive differential pulse code modulation okay it is a very uh, efficient digital coding of waveform the principle of adpcm is to use knowledge of the signal in past time to predict it in the future okay so past sample will decide uh, the next sample resulting being the error as its prediction okay so we generate the error based on the difference between the previously sample and the received sample pcm is performed before adpcm pcm is pulse coded modulation we all know pcm pcm is sampling quantization and encoding okay so this is known as pcm so we are using pcm before adpcm to decrease the number of bits for coding by passing through a pcm process before transmitting to an adpcm sample in g726 recommendation which currently includes g27 721 and 723 recommendation of international telegraph and telephone uh, uh, consultative uh, consultative and committee cctt uh, it is specified that 8 bit pcm word should be reduced to a 4 bit adpcm word so that is how you are reducing the bit length so it means you are reducing the bandwidth bandwidth which will be occupied by the signal corresponding reducing the bit flow by a factor of 2 it means it is spectral efficient so this is adpcm thank you so we have studied about the vocoders okay we have studied about the type of vocoders in this video thank you very much